Southern Miss loses 27 to 20 to South Alabama uh, here on Senior Day on the Rock. That's Jackson Howell. That's Charlie Luttrell. Uh, before we talk about the game, we just want to bid farewell to these two young men. Um, <laughs> is your last last game here at the Rock, Jackson and Charlie? Just um, pretty sad. It is sad. There's a, uh, been a lot of memories here uh, over four years now. So it's kind of crazy that it's coming to an end, but. At least we can do one more recap on the field for y'all in the freezing cold. Fitting That's, day. Fitting this day. This one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into the game. Southern Miss loses 27 to 20. Uh, South Alabama looked like, uh, you know, about the game that a lot of people expected. You know, Southern Miss staying in the game for most of the game, and then you know South Alabama pulling away there at the end. Uh, just give your overall thoughts on the game, Jackson. Um, I think I thought the offensive line played well tonight. Uh, definitely, obviously, obviously not as many sacks against Coastal, um, and that needed to happen with the reshuffling of the offensive line. But kind of like what Hall said in post game, you know, they just didn't make the plays to win tonight. And they had him open. They had Jason Brownlee for a wide open touchdown. They had him twice for a touchdown. Um, they actually found him on the weirdest play I think I've ever seen for a touchdown. <laughs> yes. But um, just overall thoughts of the game, Jackson. Yeah, only two sacks allowed, which is 66 and two thirds percent better than last week, if my math is correct. But definitely kind of a game. Not math majors. Well, yeah. <laughs> Definitely kind of a game where it looked like Southern Miss was hanging on for dear life until eventually South Alabama was able to take over. Really, at halftime, it was 13 to 10 South Alabama. We all thought it should have been worse in favor of the Jaguars. But, you know, Southern Miss did a good job of hanging in there until the very end where that a fourth and six at the South Alabama 45 went for it, didn't get it, and then allowed a, I believe it was a 29 yard touchdown by South Alabama to really clinch it. And that was that. They got a field goal with under 20 seconds remaining to make it close. Didn't get the onside kick, and that's all she wrote. But a good performance by Southern Miss, but good performances and losses really aren't anything Will Hall's looking to look at. Yeah, it seems like, Charlie, you know, they get so close in these games. And yeah. I know that Will Hall keeps saying we're building the program, we're doing things right, we're almost there. But you think they want to get some results eventually. What was kind of the, the, the morale on the team here on the field? Um, I mean, it just seems like it's been this story for a lot of the games, like you said, this season. It's, I mean, another game, one possession score. But, I mean, this really reminded me of the Tulane game in some ways. It was really similar uh, in a lot of ways, I think, but they just couldn't finish it. I know you all said it seemed like Jaguars were getting a lot of momentum, but you look at the turnovers, they uh, Southern Miss was consistently forcing that the it kept the energy on the sidelines. I think Southern Miss thought until probably, you know, when it was 10 with a couple minutes left that, you know, they were in the game. It, it was competitive throughout. And we all, I think, picked, you know, we thought that Southern Miss could be competitive throughout. And again, this is one of the best teams in the Sun Belt coming off of a game against probably the best, I'll say, uh, team in the Sun Belt. And they played Troy, who is the other team that will be playing that team <laughs> in yep. the conference title. So, I mean, that's something that Coach Hall was talking about in the pressers. They played, uh, I forgot how many teams that have eight or nine wins right. this season. Southern Miss has competed in pretty much all of those games. I would really see, say the only game that they got blown out was Georgia State. And, I mean, that's it. So, I think it shows you that they can compete in every game, but obviously, you know, that doesn't mean anything when you have five wins now. Obviously, now the attention turns to ULM to get that bowl uh, eligibility. Yeah, and, and Jackson, you know, there's six minutes left in the game, and I asked Will Hall about this. Fourth and six from the 45. Defense playing well in the second half up to that point. Uh, Summer selects to go for it, and in turn, they don't get it. South Alabama goes down, scores the game, clinching touchdown. Obviously now, you know, you would want to punt it, but do you think that you punt it there? They have three timeouts. You, you have a possibility of pinning them deep? I mean, that's one of those danged if you do, danged if you don't situations, really, to use better terminology. But, I mean, I understand him wanting to go for it. It's at the plus 45-yard line going in. And obviously he said that since it didn't work and he saw that South Alabama was able to score, that it was the wrong decision. But I don't disagree with that decision. But obviously on the flip side of that coin, when you have Mason Hunt, one of the best punters in the Sun Belt Conference, if not the country, you think you like your chances to pin them deep, three timeouts, and stop them with about six minutes left. So I see that side of the coin, but I'm not mad at Will Hall for going for it there. I think that what, what was more questionable was when South Alabama went for it twice on fourth down. 
uh, in their own territory, which, I mean, that kind of, I think, set the tone of the game. Uh, and I think, you know, Hall was responding uh, with those play calls because they went for it multiple times on fourth down. Yeah, it know. felt like South Alabama almost knew that they weren't going to get that many yeah. opportunities to score, so they're having to go forward on these fourth down. But, I mean, if I'm South Alabama, I'm relying on the defense because, you know, the defense is good. Yeah. Uh, Jason Brownlee, seven, 12 targets, seven catches. 109 yards his senior day. Charlie and I both said he was going to go for big yardage this weekend. He did go for big yardage. He led the team one touchdown. He probably could have gone for more. He had a yeah. dropped pass right here, over here on the five-yard line or whatever. Um, the trade Trello just, just overthrew him. And then he had another pass on the other side of the field where he dropped it. And it just felt like, just kind of like the story of the season is that Southern Miss, you know, they just get that close, like finger-tippingly close to being like seven and three right now or whatever, seven and four. Um, or, um, you know, so it's like they're getting that close. But, you know, going into the season, we said that the UL, Georgia State, Coastal, South Alabama gauntlet, that if they could just win one of those and get to ULM uh, five and six, you know, I think that's positive. And that's what we all projected, that they would get one of those and get to this last game five and six. So, um, Jackson, just over looking ahead to next week, ULM lost today, which means they're not playing for a bowl game next week. So, Southern Miss has more to play for on the road. Looking ahead to that game, how do you think Southern Miss responds after dropping two straight games where it's just heartbreak? Well, ULM, they they did lose. They can't make bowl eligibility, but they can play spoiler, and that's definitely something that Southern Miss cannot overlook. And Look, going into ULM, it's the game that Southern Miss probably should win, and they'll probably be favored in, but responding from these heartbreaking losses two weeks in a row, third straight loss overall, it's a game where they got to come together as a group, right? they got to get a good defensive plan because they haven't played amazingly defensively. They've given up some big plays. So they really just have to come together and send the seniors out on a high note so that they can go bowl they can go bowling for the first time since 2019. Charlie, it seems like just a completely different shift on the season, right? You know, going to the Georgia State game, we're talking about maybe, you know, seven, yeah. eight wins, and now you're talking about it's all coming down to the final game. I, I kind of had a feeling I, I'm, a, I'm like the LeBron captain meme, uh, you know, but I did really because uh, Coach Wallace even talked about it, you know, they're learning how to win, and a lot of it's a freshman, sophomore heavy team, and I mean, they were dealing with success this year, and the question was how they were going to respond. And obviously, you know, you can't hold anything against them when this uh, this loss streak came against some, you know, the hardest slate on your uh, schedule this season against some of the best teams in the Sun Belt. So, I, and it's also kind of Southern Miss classic fashion that it does come down to the final, <laughs> the game. final game. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense. It all makes sense, but. No, I don't think you can hold anything against them. Um, I remember Dalen Gill saying, you know, we needed uh, this because, not this game, but against Georgia State uh, to try to learn how to respond. And I think they're, you know, trying to still figure that out. Uh, it's a slump, but it all comes down to next week. And that's the ultimate response is, you know, if you win, you move on. If you don't, it's over. Jackson, you know, in the beginning of the season, we said not getting to a bowl game would not be a disappointing yeah. season, right? And now, if they lost next week, would that be a disappointment? Absolutely. Circumstances have changed, you know. Coming off of a 3-9 and nine season, going into arguably a better conference, I think we can agree it's a better conference, we thought that it would be an uphill battle. And the fact that they were 5-3 and three, coming off of a win on national TV against Louisiana, and if they were to lose four straight games to end the season, yes, that would be a disappointment because – I mean, you were right there, right there. And then the blowout loss to Georgia State, close losses down the road. Losing at ULM would be the biggest disappointment because that's easily the most winnable game on the schedule, I would argue. Yeah. I would agree. And I will say if they win at ULM next week, there's not going to be any complaining about these past four weeks because, I mean, if they win, they're going bowling. And what can you even say? It doesn't matter if they're 7-5, and 8-4. and four, They're still, you know, um, they had a chance to compete for a conference title, but it probably wasn't happening. But um, – Coming off of this game, I think they just have to put the last three weeks behind them and just look forward to ULM, and I really think it helps them at ULM. I know they're, they could play spoiler, mm -hmm. but I really think it helps. The Southern has more to play for in that game. Yeah, Definitely. All right, well, that is Jackson Howell. That is Charlie Luttrell. Bid you a farewell to The Rock. Would you like to wave goodbye to The Rock? <laughs> we will be at Monroe next week. Actually, Charlie will not be there, but he's walking away now. 
But uh, we will be at Monroe next week. Southern Miss loses to South Alabama 27. One more thing I actually want to say. Uh, you know, coming into this to the fourth quarter, look at it where it was this year to where it was last year when they played them going into the fourth quarter. I think that yeah. that's something, uh, for me, if I were a Southern Miss fan, I would take away from that game. That going into the fourth quarter last year, they were getting eviscerated. Like, it wasn't even close. Going into this game, they still had a chance to win. They were leading at the, end of, at the start of the fourth. So, um, that's all I have to say. Charlie Luttrell, Jackson Howell, I'm Dino Nixon. We'll see you next week in Monroe. Thanks so much for watching.